spying for a thousand years has not been hiding from the likes of you. Hello and welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Nicola Johnston and we're here at Fright Fest where the horror continues with the UK premiere of Outpost 2, Black Sun. It has simply been waiting in the shadows. It was a Nazi special weapon division. They called themselves the Black Sun. Congratulations with the huge success of the first film. Thank you. Outpost 2 is a continuation, yes. but it now has a young, strong female lead yes. um, who has a lot of heart and in a way she is an innocent. Mm -hmm. What was the casting process like? How important was it to find the right actress for that part? Oh, we, we saw so many actresses for it. I mean, we were very lucky that so many actresses wanted to do it. Um, but I think there was one period where I, I saw probably 80 or 90 girls over through two or three days. And Catherine actually had come in on the first morning. I actually thought she just smashed it. She was just fabulous. And I think the reason I went with her to start with, because I, I realized that after like a few hours of doing it, you realize that a lot of people were coming in and they were, they were playing the role as if not as the character, but as the sort of person, female character you would imagine would be in this kind of movie. And Catherine didn't. She just came and played it straight as the character with the kind of the sort of the strength but the vulnerabilities that I'd hoped to try and get in. I thought she was absolutely fabulous. So I mean, so I'd actually kind of made my mind up. I think by the end of the first morning, from the moment I saw her, I was like, yeah, she, she's it. Can I ask about when you're developing the idea and creating the story? Do you do a lot of historical research, or does it just come out of your weird and wonderful imagination? I think we we did a lot of research. I mean, in the end, that. The idea was, was actually the producers. He brought me the idea of like modern soldiers play versus undead Nazis. And, um, and because it was modern soldiers versus modern dead Nazis, just as a concept, we kind of knew we had to reverse engineer a way of getting them into the movie, as it were. So I'd, I'd love to say it was all kind of like, you know, wonderfully inspired. But in the end, we did a lot of research because there's so much the steeped history of this, you know, like kind of myths and rumors and about the. Um, so I can barely see you, by the way. <laughs> we're blinding you. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so we'd, we'd done quite a bit of research about it, but ultimately, the moment the research got in the way of it being a good scene, we'd just been it. I mean, in the end, they're scary Nazis, right? So we would just sort of, we'd, we'd get it as close as we could for it to feel maybe, have an echo where it's enough for you to kind of go, okay, I'll buy it. But if it was ever gonna get in the way with it being a good movie, then we'd always go with the better scene. Really. With this on your side, you got the perfect army. The men aren't like us. The Reich of a thousand years. Stop it. It's a slightly different movie to the first one. Uh, obviously, you know, the big curse of doing a sequel is that, you know, the, the cat's already out of the bag as far as, you know, the surprises. It's a lot more action based. Um, it's bigger, it's noisier. Um, we had a bit more money, so it's a bigger scale, more sets. Um, yeah, so it's a, just a bigger ride, I hope. I mean, I hope people will enjoy it. Like I said, it's a slightly different in tone. It's not an out and out horror movie. Um, I suppose, you know, it's more aliens to alien, you know, that's the way we've, uh, you know, we pitched it when we originally came up with the idea and um, we've hopefully followed it through. It seems like a real collaboration between everyone that's worked on the films. Did you use the same people from the first film and the second film? Uh, absolutely, uh, you know, we're quite a close team uh, up in uh, Glasgow. Steve and I met at art school 20 years ago. Uh, again, Ray's come on board to write. Um, so we're very, very tight, same production designer. Uh, and people who had either worked on the first film sort of further down the ladder, we've got, we promoted those guys up to heads of department. So there's a very, very close team. There's probably only 10, 15% of the crew who hadn't worked on the first film didn't return to the second. And I believe that you directed the third installment, is Absolutely, that correct? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we, um, we shot Outpost 2 in May last year and we'd spent an awful lot of money on sets. Uh, so we had this huge, huge expanse of uh, warehouse um, and we kept the sets up. So we turned around a script very quickly for Outpost 3. Steve was still finishing Outpost 2, so I picked up the reins and uh, we shot Outpost 3 in uh, March and April of this year. How did you find going from producing a film to directing a film? It's pretty scary, uh, bearing in mind that I hadn't directed before, um, but I suppose at the end of the day, you know, being involved in the first two films the way I have been, knowing the guys and writing again with Ray, um, it was about as easy as you could possibly hope for. Um, I, you know, it's not an easy task and I realised that very, very quickly on the first day of shooting. Um, but it was, I, I think it was about as easy as you could have hoped it to have been because I was with people who I'd worked with before and I trusted hugely so I had a great support network behind me. 
and uh, fingers crossed it'll come out. I'm being put off now by these scary Nazi zombies behind yeah. you. Well, congratulations, enjoy today, Thank and good luck much. for the next instalment. Well you. done, Thank nice you. to meet you. Cheers. The only answer to stopping them is right here. <laughs>